Welcome to Still Plays Galaxy Heroes. This is Grand Arena, the final match of the first week, season 27. And last round was a tough loss. My opponent, Gerald, just beat me on banners by a little bit. He also dropped a battle. I dropped one with the Tuscans because of doing some testing that I now kind of regret, but not really. I lost by six banners. He lost, I think he lost in the back wall here. I think the Palpatine team that I've been setting down in the early going so far. But that's the only battle he dropped and he must have found a few more solos or undersizes or just played me a little bit cleaner. But it was a well fought match and he was a good opponent with some really good mods. Today, we have another tough match. Silver Phoenix here. Let me show you the top end portion of his roster. Running Sith Eternal Emperor in Arena. Not that that matters anymore. That's what he's got going in the top portion of his roster, but looking at the speeds. Give a quick idea. That's weird. The armor is hard to get fast. I just want to look at this. It's a lot. I don't know if that's going to be relevant for this match. I couldn't really tell from his Grand Arena history, but a Sith Eternal Emperor looks to usually be on offense. Here is what the hot bot is showing. Slightly larger guild, lifetime banners is reflective of a serious player. Decent clears and undersizes. Zetas are higher, but he does have more GLs. His Omicrons, he only has two Grand Arena Omicrons. The rest of these are all Territory Wars. And he, one of them was Zam, the other one was Dash, and I don't believe he has a Relic Dash. A decent amount of relics, but what in range of what I see in Kyber 2. Decent depth, but on the shallower side. His mods are good, but not as good as mine. Relic dis distribution is pretty even between the tier 7, tier 5, and the low tier. Decent speed on the bulk of his Galactic Legends, no Star Killer. And speeds, we're fairly close in. He does have Relic Echo, but no Relic on Gideon. And the speeds here are mostly in his favor, but not entirely. And the Seven Star Executor. Let's take a look at his defense. It's a pretty good defense. Where we'll see how it goes. Has not started attacking. I did change up my defense a little, mostly rearranged it, but there's a couple different teams. What's becoming very clear is I need to increase the difficulty of the defense that I'm setting. Still not entirely sure how I want to do that. Tuscans will ultimately be moving to defense probably next, next week. But this match, I still want to use them for offense. This territory hasn't changed. That Telzin team did get a hold in the first match of the week. Which is why I'm still keeping them. This territory I decided to make a lot stronger. A lot of the teams that were on the back wall moved up front. So Palpatine moved up front. Qui-Gon moved up front. I want him to use more good teams earlier. Back wall. Won't be a huge problem. But JTR moved to defense. Ventress moved back here. 
Bosk moved back here and Iden I remembered to put on defense. What he has given for me is a pretty solid problem. So Embo, this team won't be a huge issue, but it depends on how many teams I have left at this point. Sign of Django, same kind of deal. Bam team is decent. Maul will need to take seriously, but he's better on offense. And then we have Zam with Boss. Lower territory. We are looking at Lord Vader, Padme. Padme with cats, specifically. Palpatine, Jedi Knight Luke, and there's that dash I was talking about. And I think we just start with Lord Vader. Tough part of 3v3 right now is not being able to see a lot of counters for some of these teams. But I think JMK Cat is going to be our best and safest option. Probably should throw my Padme on defense. Take out guard first. It's slightly more annoying than stormtrooper. Let's get the days off. Get the sheen over to JMK. Shred. And as soon as we take out Stormtrooper, we should be at a point where we can auto this. All right. Okay. Why'd you do that? Do I need to play this? Closer. Plenty of time. Shred. That should do it. Kind of takes a while without a couple other attackers, but pretty safe. And that's not a good sign. All right. That probably means I'm not winning this. I just got very lucky that that battle did register. Because we had a pretty awful nightmare scenario. But uh, we're good. We're good. 
So I can still do this all according to the plan that I had laid out for myself. Which this plan is going to kind of depend on no surprises on the back wall, but I have no idea what to expect. But with what he has laid out for me, I don't think... I don't think there is going to be surprises on the back wall. This is a very strong front wall, which means his the teams he has left for offense is a little bit more limited. He does have four GLs though. So he could definitely put down two without being too compromised. Would you pad me with cat? I think we just do JKR. So then we can focus down on Cat. That should be able to control her cooldowns on her Annihilate ability. And once we take her out, it should be over. So let's mark. And then we're just going to be using basics for a while. Or actually, let's feed turn meter. Turn meter. Yeah, let's just do it. Oh, I got the strategic advantage. Where that's that's what that's called, right? Yeah. So that's not an issue. Let's just pass that. Okay, closer. More of this. I do really miss Hermit Yoda in this particular match. That wasn't ideal. Come on, guys. Let's bring him back. Maybe I should be going after Padme. Come on. This is the best we've been in this whole match. No, leave me alone. There we go. Little concerned on time. because I'm a little worried about things. All right, fine. If you're going to counter, you're not really going to help me out.
I think we're gonna time out. Yeah, that's bad. Stealing that retribution is really not doing it me any favors. Don't come on. Yeah, this is gonna, this is over. We can at least come back from this. The wind condition has been eliminated. We shouldn't do that again. Because the plan was JML up against Jedi Knight Luke Gas up against Pelp. But that leaves me now in a situation where they are Relic 8. I was gonna tray a dash. It's probably better to tray a Padme at this point. Dash will be annoying, but there's other things we can use there. Just need to think a second. All right, I think I've got a decision here. We're gonna do gas. One of the things I don't have on defense is shock T, so I've got plenty of clones. But I think what I'm gonna do is Ahsoka and Echo. No, not Echo, Arc. Yes. We might be able to get away with just Ahsoka but I don't want to make an assumption on that. Just because some of these characters are new, some of these, all this is a little different. This is a week for not taking too many chances, recalibrating how I think things are gonna work. But I think that's safe. Yeah, we don't... I think just Ahsoka would have been fine. And now we know for the future. And why I wanted to think that through is I think the best cleanup I have here Actually, it might be Rex. Because the likelihood that they're going to do enough damage <clears throat> for me to be too concerned is very minimal. I just gotta take my time, build up the aerial advantage. And if I do lose somebody, it's just gonna make them a little stronger. I don't think we're ready for that. I'm gonna take a couple. If the protection up wasn't on, I would have done it. All right. 
That doesn't go through foresight, so we just gotta wait more. This way we can use Treya for dash. Being able to prevent the revives is going to be pretty huge in that match. And the plan... The plan here was Jedi Master Luke. Which is a lot. And I might regret it. But I think we... With Shakti... Wait, no. I guess there's technically some clones left. Let's just do Ayla. And that's enough of a team. I guess, you know, I should probably throw Watt with JML, because there's no reason to put Watt with Maul in 3v3, or not a good enough reason. But really, once we take out Luke, this is going to be fine. He's got ability block, I'm not going to worry about the cooldowns. Alright. this head to this back wall nope okay two debuffs is good the daze doesn't matter Isolate L3. Everyone's he's got prepared, so it, taking a dash won't matter until they annihilate. Here, that'll be Vandor. Check out this back wall, see if I dug myself into a hole or not. Alright. Alright, Grievous, we can whop with that. Dooku, let's see what else. Okay, this is straightforward. A lot of relics, but not really scary teams. But we need to play smart. This will probably come down to banners. But I wouldn't be surprised if he gets tripped up at least once. So. And we need to figure out where I want to use Tuskins, somebody without AoEs. Yeah, 
Dooku is an option. And uh, we don't have days though. He's just gonna recover too much. He's got the Zeta, so Dooku's not an option. Newt's an option. But if we might get stuck behind the damage immunity, then it might take a while to do enough damage to get through these other guys. Let's check the upper territory for where we are doing our Tuscan testing. All right, up top we have Embo and Cad Bane along with Dengar. Dengar is the only one with an AoE and it's just the thermals. That's an option. The rest of these are probably not. Yeah, the, which Zeta is this? It's probably on the unique, but yeah, it's the unique. So not Tuscans there. I think we're doing Tuscans up against Sambo. Let's just do it right now. As long as there aren't AoEs, I think this team's pretty good. We would have beat that JTR team if it wasn't for the foresight and the stealth just preventing taking them out. I've been really happy with this Omicron. All right, we got enough. This is just, this is the turn meter, right? Yeah, we're not doing that yet. Offense up. We'll do turn meter. And every time they take out a Tuscan, that's turn meter as well. I wish there was like stacking damage for taking out Tuscans. Okay. Perfect. Like, it's great that this team can comfortably take on a lot of relics. As long as there's not a lot of AoEs or recovery, it's gonna be fine. I love the sound of those Tuskies. Perfect, all right, we can probably auto from here. Why don't I have Taunt up? Oh, I guess because he was probably countering. Unfortunately, Jawas do impact the recording of this video. I'm gonna blame the cat laying down on the wiring. The microphone stops picking up the audio around the 30 minute mark and it was not muted. So I will be re-recording some narration over the remainder of the video from that point. So sorry about that. From this point forward is where the Jawas get involved and the microphone audio drops out, but I still think there's some desktop audio so we at least get some sound effects. I'm recording over the footage, just narrating something, give a hint at my thought process so that the remainder of this video stays engaging. We're gonna start with this Dooku matchup. No, not the Dooku matchup, the Grievous matchup. 
This is just going to be straightforward WAP counter. No surprises here. That's safe and strong. The WAP Omicron has been great. My opponent didn't. My my opponent had seven Omicrons. Only two of them were Grand Arena. No WAP Omicron. I, I play this to start and then I get into autoing. It's, it's a very safe auto in 3v3 and 5v5 it's already a pretty safe auto. But I play it for a little bit just because you, know, you get on the autopilot while you play. You don't really think, oh I can just hit auto and stop talking or stop playing. Yeah, I'm still playing at that This is when I realize I should have just been autoing the whole time. It's something where I wonder if Grievous should be on defense at all anymore. Because there's some scenarios in which, like, I think you can take out Lord Vader. Uh, there's other counters that he's very good for. In 5v5, I think it's debatable. In 3v3, I don't know. The, the only thing is, you s still need to draw Wampa out, so Grievous really works as Wampa bait. Just so that Wampa can't be used on other teams. He's really changed how things are played. If he does work as like a Sith Eternal Emperor or other GL counter at those higher Relic levels, that's a different scenario where okay, maybe then Grievous stays on defense because Womp is too valuable as a GL counter. But my Womp is not at those levels yet. It is something I'm going to be paying attention to once we get a lot of this 3v3 data from the first week on Swaga.gg. This, this I wonder if I should have done. This is way too strong. And I think that I should have used these guys up against Dooku because I make a number of decisions after this that all go back to this point where I think I could have done more solos had I used a different team here. This is way more than I needed. This wasn't very strong. There wasn't really too much of a threat of any of these characters taking out a counter. And troopers are just way too good for this. But it's, it's pretty safe. It just gets to a point where the extortion has spread and it gets, to, gets annoying. I do want that Relic Dark Trooper though. Be able to punch through this type of thing so much faster. But then again, if I had a Relic Dark Trooper, I definitely wouldn't have used it in this type of matchup. He would, he'd be too valuable elsewhere. And I'm interested in the uses with Sortie and Dark Trooper. You lose a little bit, but I think you gain more than you lose. Because one of the things that Sortie or any droid team is lacking a little bit are just strong attackers. There's enough boosted stats where you can get away with it, but having one really nice attacker would, would boost any Sortie squad. Yeah, so this ends up taking way longer than it needed to or should have. Yeah, so like the music playing is all from the original recording. Just the microphone. And I'm, I'm going to blame the cat laying down on the cord. Because I did not mute. I'm debating here if I want to use Dooku, if I want to use a solo, how I want to approach that. I instead jump over to the top territory. I want to start going for some of the other stronger defensive teams and see what options I have left over. So the Bosk team, was Zam on this one? I need to see the screen again. Yeah, Zam was on this one, so I wanted respect Zam and the Relic levels here and make sure I take something good up against it and then we'll return to the back wall and Dooku and those other teams seeing what I have left remaining. 
Whenever I see Zam, I like to just get out in front of it. So I'm going with Han and Chewie. Kira has the nice stacking offense and other stat boosts that I like. So I go with her lead, but probably the wrong call. Start out stunning Zam, but they're just so fast. Possible argument to have just gone straight for Bam and got rid of them. Just relegate Bosk is pretty devastating, so he just rips out the gear 11. Gear 11 Kira, which is an argument where I, maybe I should have gone for Rolo just for a character who would have had a better shot at surviving the execute. We stay focused here, just pounding away at Bosk, and now I just start spreading the control because Boba Fett is Relic 8, I opt to, to stun him. And I went for with the turn meter removal on Zam. It's not really effective, but Zam without... If there's no thermals on me, then Zam is not as much of a threat. It's really more of the turn train from the triggering of the thermals that's a threat. But we take out these, these big pieces, focus down. Better leader would have gave us Another banner, probably, but it's still good enough considering it's a Zam army. The Maul and the Bam are probably the next two biggest threats here. I forget the exact ordering I take these on. And I opt for Maul. And I did not take Maul. What a oh, I think I go with Vader here. One of the things I've been working on figuring out is in 3v3, how do I want to use my Darth Talon and how what I did last round and what I do this round is Darth Talon is really nice at just speeding up Vader and making a Vader lead a little bit more viable because when he's removed from being paired with Palpatine, he's a little bit slower, not as great. That's Speed boost he get from, gets from Palpatine is really valuable, but Dark Talon gives another option for speeding up that Vader and making... I don't do this. This is not what I decided, or I don't think. No, this is not what I do. This is what I was debating. Yeah, so I skipped ahead in the video. We go for Vader, Darth Talon. Savage, probably not needed. No, I, I don't use Savage. I choose against it. I bring in Sith Trooper. I'm just having a tank just in case they get some turns. I wasn't checking speeds and things, so I wanted to just give them that pre-taunt to negotiate if it comes down to it. Merciless Massacre on Maul so that with the Retribution he doesn't counter and get more stacks of anguish. And from here it's just these basics are ripping apart these undergeared characters. Now I can focus on the parts I need to. And I get to my turns again before I have to worry about Maul. And then the dots do the damage. Now we're going to move on to Bam. He's the next biggest threat that I decide that I got to deal with. And what I ultimately decide to do is take way too strong of a team. I use Starkiller here, and I think that's... I need to start using Starkiller up against much better teams. Right now, I'm my brain has not adjusted for the quality of my Starkiller now. He's at Relic 5 now. He was the first couple weeks that I had him unlocked, he was at lower gear levels, so he wasn't as effective. But you'll just see this is no contest. This was 
not a great use of him. Plenty of other teams I could have used here. Get the defense penetration up. Hopefully pretty soon we this the that best Garmando we see get a lot better. I'm really looking forward to like all the Kenobi and Kenobi and Book of Boba Fett content. Uh, one of the things is I think we will see Kenobi stuff faster at a at a faster rate than Book of Boba Fett. Not before or sooner than Book of Boba Fett stuff, but I don't think we're going to have to wait on it for as long as we had to with Book of Boba Fett. Just because that Filoni favreau combo has not shared as much information with CG. It looks like Kenobi, I'm thinking they did collaborate with CG a little bit more. I think the Inquisitors are part of that. I think CG knew to work on the Inquisitors. And we know Forlam and Zuckus are in the trailer, so I think we're going to see Forlam, Zuckus, and we're going to see Chrysanthemum. So there's probably three more bounty hunters on the way. Now I'm going back and forth. We're going to skip ahead right now. You don't need to see me click and deliberate. We head back to the back wall, and I'm going to do... Dooku now, and I take too strong of a team here. I think I overthink this. I'm concerned about the days, and I don't want to deal with the days. And I'm my original plan was to use a Jedi Knight Luke solo up against Kylo Ren. And because of the days here with Dooku, because of the recovery, I decide to use Jedi Knight Luke here. I think that ends up being a bad call. I'm just confirming that there's no stun, that, I, he, that he's immune to stun. Which is one of those things that I know, but I don't want to slip on. So we jump into this. And I could have used another team here, and that's what I should have done. Because this is... This is way too much. So... Speeds are corrected. We stun everyone. I can just focus in on Sunfac. Also, somebody. I don't know. This is where I should have used the troopers. Because I could have just. I would have had two options with Moff Gideon and Piet today's Dooku. Because the. When he counters, he's attacking my health, not just the protection. And that steals banners. That, well, one banner. Uh, ultimately, it's not going to matter in this match, but it's one where it would have been nice. It would have been the smarter play. Now for Kylo Ren. For, what did I do here? I think I did Maul with Jang Django or just Django. No, I did Bounty Hunters. It didn't go exactly how I wanted. It was kind of low banners. I was hoping for the contracts to go off, and I kind of play it. So with, there was one moment I make a mistake here, which prevents me from getting the contract when I should have. So we go Django, and I wanted to do a Django solo, and this is the impacts of all those decisions coming from Newt. Or if I would have just used a different counter, that would have been fine up against Newt. I would have used Troopers up against Dooku, Jedi Knight Luke up against Kylo Ren. Because what I ultimately end up doing is, I think, oh, I can do Watt and Nest up against the Knight Sisters, Which kind of worked, but you'll, you'll see what happens. But I could have done a Django solo, which is what I wanted to do up against the Night Sisters and what I should have done. This ends up just this all turns into a sloppy route. It all kinda works, but it's all pretty inefficient. So we get the debuffs on the field. We don't land as many as I would have liked. I do the basic to get another debuff down. 
so I have more flexibility and options. I get I call the stun off. And now with the retribution up, we do a lot of work towards taking out Kylo. I'm just doing the basics for the double tap to get closer to the contract. And the mistake is coming up. I'm paying attention to the corner. I don't realize that the debuff came off. And had I realized I could have done something to ensure more debuffs were on the field to get the contract faster. I opt for the AOE because I wanted to get more debuffs on around, but with the foresight here, things mess up and I'm getting further away from executing this the way that I want. Like had I done the conflagration at before I lost Grief Karga, I probably would have still lost Grief, but I would have the contract by now. I wouldn't have lost Mando. Confirming that that doesn't go through Foresight. The conflagration does trigger the contract to get to get uh, bounty hunters resolve back. And this foresight is so annoying. It keeps preventing me from playing this the way that I do. So I end up just using this ability now. I should have used it probably earlier at a different point in the battle. Take out a character, get resolved back. Go for the debuff. And now with the double taps, the foresight is less of a problem. And now here I do the thing with Night Sisters I didn't completely think through. I had I brought in Kira or not used Kira already, this it would have worked better. And or Hermit Yoda. So I put the weapons tech on Daka because the idea is it'll prevent revives. But I want to be careful to not just go after a zombie and stack health on Daka. So I'm playing this slow. It's not as smooth as I want, and the tenacity down from the basic on zombie is gonna get pretty annoying. So we're focusing on zombie, or not zombie, on Talzine. But I don't get as many turns as I want. And damage is not going to increase as quickly as I want. So it ends up taking me way longer than I would have liked to get through Telzin. And one of the things I wasn't really considering was, was the rate at which I would be taking turns versus Daka healing. Which is what this ultimately falls apart on. If I had more damage either from Master's Training or from a different leader, this probably would have been a little bit better. So I stun Daka so that she stops stunning me. Because that's what's really becoming a problem is getting stun locked. Now I worry about taking out Telzine. This portion of things works. We get rid of Talzin. But the remainder of this battle, maybe we'll speed this up because I don't think it's really worth watching at this point, is I never do enough damage and never get out of being stunlocked enough to take out Daka. So actually we are gonna speed this up because the point has been made.
So we get days down. This stacking health doesn't become too much of an issue because I don't take out zombie that many times. We get Daka down in health a few times, but we never get her to a point where we can safely take her out. She's al she always heals before I get that chance. Like right now. We do the damage. I think I need to mute the desktop audio because that accelerated sound effect sounds bad. Yeah, you just see that this was underthought. This was an underbaked idea. I, th I think I even give up at a certain point because it's pretty clear. I think I get her down to yellow and I just decide that's good enough. But Django would have been great. I would have had healing immunity. I would have been able to get around taunts. It's what I... It would have worked. It's what i done in 3v3 all the time. But just... That's what I mean of those... The, the snowball effect of one decision. All stemming from that using too strong of a team up against Newt. Yeah. Now we get to debating between, all right, I've got Scion of Django, I have Padme, I need to decide, not Padme. Uh, I have, there's Scion of Django, there's this DACA team to clean up, and I gotta decide how to wanna split up these teams. I use Padme up against Sign of Django because of how his contract works where he needs to be buffed and hit a debuffed character Padme is going to make it harder to land those debuffs and bring in Shakti for a dispel and a clone so that Shakti has somebody to call because with that dispel it will make it even harder for someone to be buffed to trigger that contract. Call in the assist, get a stealth, get the protection up so they can't land those debuffs. I'm probably gonna have a Relic Fennec for next week. That's it. The number of places I wanna spend Kairos is getting pretty tough. I, I want Sortie and I want Fennec. I do not have enough Kairos right now to do both those things. I might take the next several store refreshes and see what I can gather up. I go for Karga because he's going to be faster and easier at Relic 2. And with the recovery and stuff, he's going to be annoying. Dispel. This basically goes according to plan, not a big deal here. I think Padme though, I might move to defense for next round. I wanna swap out certain teams. But I think I'll wait until we get the 3v3 battle results and see what's going down too easy, what's doing a decent job, check banners, see what other teams are working for other players. So with Mando, this is just with Anguish and the uh, Rage, is it called Rage? I forget the name of the ability. But with those abilities, I'm gonna be able to pound through the taunt and work through Daga pretty quickly before she stacks enough health where I need to worry about it. I've got enough recovery of my own. But I focus down on Daka, trigger the first revive. My damage is increasing, so the second revive is gonna happen pretty quick. 
There's the second revive, and now I just need to take her out. Get another five stacks. And on to worrying about zombies. Probably something we could have just done in the first place, too. Now on to Fleets. Fleets is going to be pretty straightforward. He set a... He set the same kind of fleet def defense that I usually do. So Negotiator, Tarkin, and Akbar. I, and I think I misplay this. Well, t I think I take a look at some of these pilots. Akbar is gear nine, and I think what I decide to do is executor up against negotiator, strongest fleet up against strongest fleet. Then I have the malevolence, and I use the malevolence up against rebels just because historically rebels are tougher than Tarkin. But what I'm not really factoring in is how much better the interceptor makes the empire. And it's something where I'm going to be respecting the Empire from this point forward. Because things do not go to plan. I figure it'll be easier to multi-hit the, uh, the Tarkin fleet. And I don't know if that's the case. So I kind of play this executor, negotiator lineup poorly. This takes way longer than it should have. Yeah, so we're just... I should have been marking fleets in a different way, because what ends up happening is I trigger... I trigger a stealth at... Right there. I trigger the stealth, and I should have called... Oh, I, I think there was a daze on Razor Crest, which is why I didn't do it. But I shouldn't have taken out Anakin there, because... Now Anakin is under stealth for a large portion of the rest of the match, which prevents me from playing this in a more efficient fashion. I should have just been patient, waited for a turn where, where the Razor Crest could have done the mark. I was like, right here is close to be taken out. Now he gets something loyalty, whatever loyalty, I forget what, what that ability is called. Undying loyalty. Cat's trying to mess with the mic again. Rather avoid having to re record this nonsense we're doing right now. But it is actually making the video shorter. I've been able to cut out some extra wasted time. And some of the deliberation as I'm thinking this through, figuring out how I want to play it. So you can just see how long Anakin ends up surviving because of the way I play this. Just an unnecessarily long counter of the negotiator. Like, this is a battle you can auto. But one thing that was weird is how quick, how the Jedi Counselor was the first reinforcement. That's the first time I've ever seen that. I think it's because his plo was crazy weak. So Akbar, I go for next, and this is the wrong call. I think I would have been able to more efficiently to hit Akbar because he's gear nine, and the Y wing would have been 
fairly easy to take out, which is what I didn't factor into my thinking before I was in the middle of playing it. I'll realize it during the battle. But right around now is when I notice the health and I start thinking, yeah, maybe I misplayed this. This battle will go fine, it's, not, it's a non-issue. But I start realizing maybe I should be respecting the TIE Interceptor more. He has a 5-star gear 10 TIE Interceptor. So we're just, we rip through the Y-Wing really quickly. Another fleet probably could have done that. Just working on the Falcon. He gets his reinforcement, which is the Outrider, which really is not great at four stars. Like, he has a weak dash, his is like gear 9, but I've got a Relic 5 dash and I don't like the Outrider all that much, and it's a priority reinforcement. It's something where I think we gotta wait until you got more stars on that thing. So we rip apart Rebels, and I'm gonna be regretting it. So we're going to go with the Radis, and maybe this would have gone better if I would have burned a fleet, but I don't think it would have gone much better, if at all. I bring in way too many reinforcements. I, I have no idea how badly this is about to go. This is just not realizing how this match is going to work. Not, not being aware of all the components of the kit, how that's gonna completely mess up the Radis. Just devastated. So right when the TIE Bomber goes, or not the TIE Bomber, so TIE Interceptor comes out, dispels everyone, throws down buff immunity. That right there ruins me. Do not use the Radis to counter the TIE Interceptor because it's over now. Because now I can't get the ultimate. We're not going to get the cooldowns because you need to have, be using the specials while you have Foresight. And without the Deflector Shield, you're not going to get the Foresight. So using the specials isn't going to be counting towards reducing the cooldowns on the ultimate. So I do the turn meter removal here. I look at a few of the abilities and I opt for sure turn meter removal is probably the best call here, even though the days isn't really all that important. Do a little damage with the AOE. Just reading through these abilities to make my decision. I'm gonna go with the mass assist. But this is a newer kit, so I don't know all the points, so I'm just reading through things, making sure I think all of this through. Should have done that before the battle. Not ideal stuff here. was just no contest. Could not have been easier for the Empire. It's just something to be really aware of in the future. So now I'm in a position where I gotta use the finalizer now and hope I get lucky. Everyone's well, I guess he has SLKR, but 
Everyone has better tie echelons than I do. I'm... I'm gonna have six stars for next week. I already have that farm to six stars. But I, I probably, I need to throw more gear on the First Order Officer. So give a little turn meter. We've got advantage, so I'm going for the bigger hit on the bomber. Doesn't do much damage. I need that relic on Kylo Ren. We do haunt to the mass assistant do much damage either. Then Tice Interceptor comes out and I'm just I go down. I go for the turn, even though we have buff preventing the advantage, but with the turn I get the stun. Now we bring in the special forces so I can call in an assist. Assist wasn't necessary, but that was the thought process. And now I make sure we take out this interceptor. Goes down easy, and the rest of this is over. But at least it's in a scenario where we're in a much better position. I'm glad the reinforcement gets called out. That way I don't have to worry about the reinforcement ability for the command shuttle. Now we're going to do Tarkin with the Sith fleet. That's my best option at this point. Because there's at least geared up pilots. There's some synergy. I go Sith fighter as a reinforcement because it goes down really quick. It's a pretty weak ship. And I don't want to risk it going out too early. Tide Reaper is a little tankier. And if any ships go down, it gives a little bit of turn meter, excuse me, turn meter to the capital ship. But all that preloaded turn meter, they go through things quickly. This synergy I like though. Getting Retribution onto the Sith Bomber is nice. All these counterattacks work well. And so right... Oh, I get a dodge. But... Now we get more Sith Synergy. He brings out the Reaper. We're gonna focus on the healer though. Even though I know there's a risk here because taking out the Reaper is gonna feed turn meter to Tarkin and he's going to get his ultimate off but I I think this is going to help in any cleanup scenario so I go this direction even though I think it inherently has some risk to it he's got the gauntlet I lose the bomber which is bad He's getting very close to the ultimate. And right there. Over. But 
the final two ships are out on the field. And I still have a final fleet of nonsense. So I'm going to do Rebel Synergy, put the Outrider out with these other ships under Mace. None of this is ideal. Would have been nicer to keep another ship from that Radis loss. But right here, this goes pretty well and straightforward. He's got no more reinforcements. These two ships aren't that strong. Click on the TIE Reaper, so because we got target lock on Gauntlet, we can hit both those ships. See a little hesitation there from me thinking about feeding turn meter, but I ultimately decide who cares. Calling the mass assist to take out the gauntlet. All right, that's not how that ability works. Do a bunch of attacks. This is a win. We get through it, but it takes way more attempts than I thought it would. And right there. So it's a full clear, but it was on its way to be a very efficient, nice full clear. And then from a couple decisions, it turns into a far sloppier full clear. And right after this, I'm going to show the results from my opponent's attacks so we can see how this week wraps up. I changed my mind. This will make Sage happy. I'm going to do the review. I think for, at least for the last match of the week, this is something I might throw in at the end of video so you can see how these matchups went. The start of the next week showing the results is a little less relevant. But this was a nice win, and my defense did well. Front territory, I think a team held? There was a number of holds, but I don't remember if this specific territory. Yet. Newt gets a nice win, which I was not expecting, but I'm happy to see it. That's a fairly old team at this point, so its utility is not what it used to be, but that used to be a solid defensive team. Top territory, we got a few more holds. One coming from Mon Mothma, or a couple coming from Mon Mothma. This is the team that I think I'm going to be using. I might want to add some more speed, make Katarn even faster, but it's the potency synergy with Cara Dune that I really like. Where if she has potency up, she's going to keep reviving, and Kyle Katarn is going to help make sure that she has that potency up for those revives, which is going to make the team more annoying than other versions. It doesn't have the same turn meter loop potential, turn meter train potential, as like POW and Hoth Rebel Scout, but that's mitigated by having all the additional speed that Katarn is giving them. On the back wall, you can see both those territories held. He only took out one team back here. I forget how many he attempted. So didn't attempt many battles. Took out Grievous right away, but took two shots up against Boss, which is kind of surprising. There's a reason I moved this team to the back wall. It's good because of the relic levels, but it's not that good. And... I've been delaying the Zam Omicron for a long time. It might be something that I consider for 3v3 purposes. For 5v5, I'm a little less interested in it. It's a good one, but I've talked a lot about how I feel about it. Fleet did very well, and he kept a lot for Fleet, so I'm impressed how this turned out. But this could have also been time-related. He only attempted one battle up against the Rebels, but he has had Executor for offense, he had Malevolence for offense, he had a number of GLs, so he had a finalizer fleet that he could have used, but did not attempt additional battles. I 
didn't watch his attacks as they were going on, but he definitely had enough time to keep fighting. He, I popped in once with like three hours to go in t with Grand Arena, and he, that's when he was doing his attack. So I know he at least had three hours. But that wraps up this week of Grand Arena. The results were pretty nice. Some interesting testing. I wanted to do test Inquisitors more than I did. But we did do plenty of Tuscan Omicron testing, which turned out pretty great and impressive. I think next week, though, it'll be moving to defense. That will be the long-term use. But it has plenty of offensive utility where it has a huge ability to punch up and take on plenty of relic squads as long as you're not dealing with a lot of aoe's or too much recovery because at the gear 11 standpoint at least they don't have they probably won't have enough damage to outpace the recovery on characters at least relic level characters who have a good amount of recovery for next week, I think I'm going to be throwing a bunch of resources on Sortie. I want to have her at gear 11 pretty quickly. I could opt instead for adding more relic, not relic levels, uh, more gear levels to the Inquisitors rather than Sortie. But I think those Kairos will be better spent getting a droid team up than making those Inquisitors a little better. So that's what I think we'll be looking at for next week. Starkiller might move around. We'll see what kind of GLs and opponents I have to go up against. But thank you for watching. Be safe out there, everyone, and be excellent to each other. This is Still Plays Galaxy of Heroes.